my friends, welcome to the internet. Have a look around. Uh, sorry, that just came over me. Um, welcome to this speedboat, is what I actually wanted to say. Um, to Villa Ava. And this is modeled quite closely after Villa Erba. Um, please excuse my butchering of that Italian pronunciation. Um, but um, yes, that is a villa um, on the shores of Lake Como in Italy, as I said. And it is incredibly beautiful. And it is called Villa Eva um, in this specific case because I built this at the request of Eva, who's a patron. Um, so, Eva, this is for you. I hope you're watching. Um, she actually did not request this specifically, but um, she said she would like to see something being built in Del Sol Valley. And I just went all in, I guess. Um, <laughs> I've had this uh, saved as inspiration for quite some time, and I think I uh, mentioned this in a few speed builds. Um, or I guess at least last week's speed build that I've um, been trying to build this for a long time that I'm building something really big and I'm gonna have to confess something here right now um, this 27 minute video is actually only uh, the exterior of this villa so sorry about that <laughs> but you are gonna get the interior next week it is actually done in this almost divine management of time. <laughs> um, I somehow got to build the interior of this over the past, um, I want to say, three days. So quite happy with myself for that um, because I did not want to show you this without you being able to actually download it if that's something you wanted to do so although the speed build for the interior is gonna be out next week because it's not cut yet um you can already download this as a fully finished build i thought that was just something that was useful so that's how i did it um and I would still recommend watching the speedbuild next week, of course. No, I'm I'm sure I'm gonna lose a lot of views um, on that part because I see that with everyone basically spitting their really long speedbuilds in half. Um, although I'm kind of guessing that you just really lose the people that click away after half of the video. Anyways, um, and I also do not want to complain about this at all. Um, so that's how I'm gonna do it. I just didn't want to cut so much of this. Um, building the exterior took me about eight hours, or not really, I had eight hours of footage, which means that there was still some time that I didn't record anyways for like the floor plan and just when I really have to do some thinking <laughs> and just looking around, spinning around all the time and checking out what I really want to do with an area or something um, or if I'm content with something I've already built. So that also takes a lot of time. But yeah, this took me eight hours and then doing the interior, also only counting the actually recorded parts, um, took me another um, five hours, six hours, something like that. So. Um, really big, but also I had a lot of fun doing it. And as I said, the exterior is actually quite close um, to the original. It has, you see me building um, this really cool tower right now. Might be my favorite part of this whole build. Um, it actually has a whole other side wing attached to it. So this area, this whole building is incredibly big. And um, also, of course, the gardens or like I think there's maybe even you could call it a park that's attached to this build 
is actually way bigger than would ever fit on a 64 by 64 lot. Also, by the way, my windows are wide open because it's incredibly hot and I love hearing the birds outside. I need that <laughs> in my life where I sit um, on a computer a lot of the time. So, um, sorry if you can hear that. Or, I don't know, I guess actually you're welcome if you're hearing the birds and the motorcycles outside. Um, so I kind of scrapped all that extra additional building uh, because it would have just been way too big. And I also made the building a tiny bit shorter, which in hindsight was not necessary. I thought this was gonna be huge on the inside and I'm not saying it was small because it did take me five hours to furnish, but it was smaller than I anticipated. Like I had a lot more rooms in mind that I could have put in here that I did not have the space for. So this does still have five bedrooms, um, which is an incredible amount of bedrooms um, for me because I can never imagine living with so many people. But then again, I haven't really furnished this um, with a residential in mind. So the real life Villa Erba is rentable. So you can rent this place for weddings, um, which is what I've seen like the most pictures of and it looked gorgeous. Um, so that is kind of how I built this as a residential slash wedding venue. Um, as I said, it's gorgeous. It can also be used for like, I don't know, conventions or art exhibitions and that kind of stuff. Um, but I thought using this as a wedding venue was just really beautiful and made a lot of sense in terms of like the bedrooms and stuff. So I do have a master suite that I put in here, which would be the bridal suite. And then a few, like four more bedrooms with um, one design room designed for children and then four, no, three rooms um, for like whoever you'd want to also stay the night. So I was thinking that most of the guests that you'd have here um, would go home or would go to their hotel after um, the party is over. Um, and then you'd maybe have like parents or best friends or bridesmaids or whatever um, who you'd want to stay in this place as well, or you'd at least like the option. So um, that is kind of how I've furnished those um, rooms um, and if you do want to use this as a residential then you definitely can maybe you'd want to make a few changes make it a little more personal or like design the rooms in a way that makes more sense for um, a five people family or even more if you'd want there is uh, definitely some double beds in there and then you could also redesign some rooms to be bedrooms or like change the floor plan to make more room for bedrooms if that's um, something you would want to do. And then I thought, I hope it's not too confusing if I do talk about stuff in the build that I've not already built on screen, but you've seen the intro, so you know what the place looks like. It has this really, well, kind of natural looking pool up front, um, or I guess out back. Oh yeah, by the way, <laughs> if you're really confused about this, I started to build this the wrong way around on purpose uh, because I knew I was gonna build the front entrance first, which has this very beautiful, um, is it Ivy actually? I mean, it's Bougainville in the game. I'm trying to figure out what it is in real life but it's definitely big and green. And um, so that is growing all over the front and I knew I wanted to do that first and I wanted to see that in the light so I could just build it more easily and it would look more pretty. And because this lot is backlit, I started to build it the wrong way around and then I think soon 
I'm gonna turn this back around so I could start doing the landscaping and then also see this part from the beautifully lit side of the lot. Um, so, where was I? <laughs> I was talking about weddings. Oh yeah, it has this um, kind of pond area, pond pool area um, uh, in the back garden. And that is where I saw people place their wedding arch. And that is how I would do this in The Sims if I um, were to use it as a wedding venue. And then I would just place the chairs on the path that leads from the stairs um, to the pool or whatever you want to call it. Um, and maybe on the lawn. Um, yeah, hope that isn't too confusing for you. Um, but I think it would be a very beautiful ceremony in real life and in The Sims. And I'm gonna try and figure out uh, how much you would actually pay in real life to you to rent this as a wedding venue. Um, this building of Sims came out to an incredible amount of money in the end with um, the interior furnished. Let me lie, but I think it was about 1.3 million, which is insane. Like I already feel kind of bad when my builds cost like 400,000 simoleons. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely a new level. Um, oh yeah, I also know that we can actually place rentals in any world. You could use this pretty easily as a rental. That's cool. Okay, so I'm gonna Google this and I'm gonna take you on the journey with me. Um, I'm on some type of website. I don't know if it's there official website, but um, okay, it says the building was uh, done in the 19th century, kind of figured that out myself. Um, oh, and you, it seems like you can only actually rent the ground floor halls. Um, but yeah, you're gonna see this in the interior speed build next week, um, but I've kind of done everything in a way so that wouldn't make sense um, to use this as, um, as a kind of entertaining space for a lot of people. So the dining room has this really long table um, for everyone and this kind of buffet section, just so that makes sense. Okay, opening times, entry prices and more. You can visit this villa, by the way. If you live in Italy, if you are lucky enough to live close to Lake Como, then you can go there. You can make an appointment and you can go there. Um, guided tours are also available for a fee. And I cannot seem to find out how much I would pay to actually rent this place. Oh, I got it. Although it says the villa is not licensed for civil legally binding ceremonies. Oh. That sucks. Um, <laughs> okay, so I guess it would have to be some kind of informal ceremony. Not that I'd care. Also, I'm not gonna be married anytime <laughs> soon. I feel like I'm really sending some very confusing signals here. Um, okay, but it does say Villa Ebba rental fee only, only starts from 10,000 euros plus 22% tax which is a lot of money definitely a lot of money although i have to be honest i kind of thought it was going to be more and it says every other service which would be ceremony music food etc is on top of that of course uh but yeah that sounds so doable doesn't it and i'm actually finding some uh pictures of the interior on this website right here where you can rent it and uh, I kind of I'm kind of happy the way I did it I would not have designed the interior of this place this way I can tell you that I would have done it the way I actually did it <laughs> so yeah I, this 
kind of grand hall in the center. Um, I took that as some pretty, not really accurate inspiration, but kind of. And then the rest I couldn't find any pictures for also didn't really try obviously because now I just stumbled across them but yeah I'm very happy with how I did this so telling you again to check in next week if you want to see the interior or just download this build um, while we're at it this uses a hell of a lot of Felix's custom content as always it is linked in the download post which you are gonna find in the description or you can download it from Origin, from the gallery. Uh, my ID is Honeybella Builds, um, as in the verb she does build. Honeybella built. Um, <laughs> and if you do that, I'm quite sure your game is gonna be just as buggy as mine. And those um, bottom stairs, um, the ones that you can see right now, uh, always jump up. Almost every time I loaded the lot, those stairs would jump up because I'm gonna extend them actually so they reach into that little uh, foundation part, which looks very cute, but apparently the game can't really handle that, so you might have to replace them. But that is fine, right? We are content with this situation <laughs> and I just want them to finally fix this mirror bug. That is seriously the most annoying thing in the entire Sims universe is that mirror bug because my screenshots still look like crap and it makes me really upset. <laughs> Sorry about this little outbreak of rage. Um, this is quite interesting, I think, what I'm doing here on the screen. Um, if you were wondering how I managed to fit a fifth story, which is actually impossible, onto this tower, um, then you can now see, or you just saw that I uh, built this myself. It's not actually, it doesn't have any full-sized walls. Um, it doesn't have an actual roof. It's all fake. Uh, did it all with Felix's content. And I'm really happy about this. I think I've said this already, but the tower might be my favorite part. It looks really cool, I think. And then I'm building the entrance to the basement right there. Um, I did not do too much with the basement. It just has a little wine cellar, which is ridiculous because there's another huge wine storage next to the kitchen on the ground floor. Um, but yeah, I thought that made sense in a basement. Then it has a little kitchen and a little or two little um, bathrooms or not half bathrooms is what they are uh, for like I thought the staff that would have to run this place if there's a wedding going or whatever so they would have like their own area you know rich people don't want to see the people serving them apart from when they're serving them <laughs> um, if you've got laundry day, I think a laundry basement would make a lot of sense. Um, and you could also put some additional bedrooms in there or like a dance floor or something. Although, yeah, there's only one entrance and that doesn't really make sense. But yeah, whatever you want to do, there is a lot of place down there that could be filled with um, whatever is missing from the ground floor and the first floor for you if you don't want to redecorate those uh, spaces that are already done. Um, the landscaping is a little funny. They almost only have those like perfectly round manicured bushes and I gotta say I kind of like that. I'm usually more of the overgrown garden type which I'm pretty sure you know if you've seen any of my videos, but um, I went with the original route um, for this place. So I kind of also did that. Um, was quite easy with the bulbous bush from base game. And for once I'm kind of happy with how the empty lawn space actually looks. I don't know why, but it did work out for this build and I'm very content with it. So 
Um, this um, part that I've lowered down a little bit is what's gonna be the uh, pond pool area. Um, there is the entrance to the actual pool, which is uh, still like a usual pool trim. So you can actually use this pool for swimming if that's something you wanted to do. Um, so in the original place, this pool actually extends into Lake Como, which is truly gorgeous. Um, I recommend you go look at the actual place. I mean, not not in real life. Um, I mean, if you can, go do it, please. But um, yeah, <laughs> um, if you're interested in this, then do check out the photos. It's 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 really really beautiful. Uh, obviously, I wasn't able to do that, but um, yeah, sitting there and looking out over Dalso Valley is its own kind of special feeling, I'm guessing. So also quite content with this. And I didn't put too much furnishing outside. Oh, you just saw those stairs jumped up. Um, this is gonna happen a few times, I think, even in this video. Um, hope that doesn't bother you. So yeah, I didn't uh, put too much furniture uh, outside because it looks this kind of, it has this kind of empty look in real life. Um, Obviously, I, I mean, I would expect that that's because they want everyone to imagine what it would look like when they host their own event there. Um, but yeah, it looks really sophisticated, I guess. And usually I don't like to do that in The Sims because it just never really translates. Um, I really do think that in The Sims, more is more usually, which is kind of sad, but... Um, but I think it did work for this lot. And then I thought if you were gonna use this for whatever event, event um, then you might want to put like specific activities down or if you wanted to use it as a regular residential or almost palace, I guess. Um, 1.4 million, 1.3 million simoleons. Yeah, it's a palace. Um, then you could design this in a more personal way, I guess. The terrain paint that you're seeing there in the front right now, those pebbles that reach that lot, um, the end of that lot, um, I'm gonna change that. You are not gonna notice it. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna notice it. You're not. I'm not gonna show you. Um, I did this before I started doing the interior, but after I had already filmed the footage for the video tour so um, you're only gonna see this next video or if you download the lot or check out the screenshots oh no not even if you check out the screenshots i also checked the screenshots before but um yeah i changed that it was kind of annoying to me how um it was this really hard cut at the edge of the lot of the terrain paint it didn't make any sense it looked ugly um, I was just trying to deal with how, you know, that driveway extends like onto the edge of the lot and then it just stops and it's also a little bit off, like it's a little to the side. That is one of, like, if I had to say what was bothering me about The Sims, that would be right there at the top. How incredibly annoying is that? <laughs> Um, so I, there was nothing I could really do, but, um, I changed it so that, um, there was like an edge to the terrain paint and then I extended the lighting there, which is something that I have not done yet on video, but you're going to see me do. So I put, um, little lights at the edge of, um, all of those pebbles, um, which looks very cute at night, by the way very magical and then i kind of did that just um there for the front as well because it just looked a little weird with that really clear cut and very straight edge um but yeah that's just what we're gonna have to deal with i think actually that this would look quite cute on different lots um 
they would have to be 64 by 64. I tried placing this on a 40 by 50, I think, and it was definitely too small. Um, build looks way bigger on a 40 by 50 because you just need some kind of surrounding, I guess. But if we ever get a Mediterranean world, which is, oh man, what a dream. What a dream that would be. If we ever get a Mediterranean world, then please place it there because that's where this would really belong. Uh, oh, some nice Mediterranean plants, that'd be gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, but yeah, I think for now it is fine over here in Dalso Valley. Uh, by the way, if there's any specific lots or worlds you want me... Ooh, there's this magical lighting. Um, you want me to build in, then please do not hesitate to tell me. Um, I love getting your feedback. Uh, it's been awesome these past few months, by the way. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, oh my god, I didn't even say that. I've just reached 500 subscribers, um, which may sound not very impressive to most of you, but it is very impressive to me and I love you all. You're my friends and thank you so much for um, liking and subscribing. It's incredible to um, actually interact with people and see that you watch these little tiny videos that I do and you enjoy them as well. And if there's ever any opinions that you have, then please tell me. Um, I love to know what you think. And if there's anything you'd want me to talk about in, in speed builds or anything I could do to make this more enjoyable for you, then please let me know. Now you go and have fun with the video tour and I will see you again next Friday. Until then, I hope you have the bestest of times. Bye bye.